in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, oh, my dear friends, benefactors, and my children, uh, this is a message for Easter. Every year I give an Easter message. You know, this year, uh, the Easter message may not be with much joy because uh, we are going through a critical period of the time. We used to have big celebrations, you know, on Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday, washing of the feet, and Good Friday, procession with the uh, crucifix, kissing the crucifix, and on Easter Sunday, a uh, night vigil, new fire, new water, and taking water home, and then procession with the statue, the recent statue of the Lord, and eating, drinking for children, uh, special chocolates, and all the celebrations outside, people gathering in the restaurant, or on the seashore, uh, holidays. Now, we don't have all these external celebrations. I think Lord has some plan. I think we are to endure us. We have to come in the depth of our heart and see more the spiritual meaning of Easter. This is what I am going to share with you. Not a long talk because uh, I don't have uh, time for a long talk and also I am not so healthy in this uh, season, a holy week, to give a long talk. But I just reflections, three points. Actually, what is the meaning of Easter? We know with the Holy Spirit in baptism, we are a risen people. We are expected to be a risen people. That's why in Colossians chapter 3, St. Paul says, you are risen with the Christ, so see the things that are about. I just want to speak to you three main points, main a meaning of the Easter. One, reconciliation. Number two, redemption. Number three, justification. And number four, righteousness. We read in various texts of the Bible that the Lord has brought us to reconciliation and redemption and justification and righteousness uh, through his death and resurrection. Yeah, we are going to have the Holy Thursday, Holy Saturday, Easter Vigil, and Easter, although we don't go to the church and celebrate with our rituals, we are going to do it uh, in the heart. I know many of you would be watching uh, all these happening in a church to online, in the internet or YouTube. Then we can recall all that happened in the past in the mind. But more look in the inside of the heart. Number one, we are reconciled with God by the death of Christ and resurrection of Christ. We read that in the Bible very clearly, especially in Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 onwards. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 onwards. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He who made both, who made both one and broke down the divining wall of enmity to his flesh, abolishing the law with his commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross 
putting that enmity to death by it. So then, you are no longer strangers, soyones, but you are the fellow citizens with the holy ones, members of the household of God. Yet, in the Garden of Eden, when our Adam and Eve, the first parents, committed sin by breaking the commandments, they went away from God's love. They were separated from God. As we read in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2, by sin we are separated from God. And God, Jesus, sent, God sent His Son Jesus uh, to take this separation on His body. And that means to that end to that, uh, what you call, wall of separation and reconcile with God. That means becoming one with God, again having that experience of paradise, experience of love with God. That's why Jesus uh, carried our sins and died on the cross. And we reap the fruit of that at the Easter. Uh, when Jesus is risen means we are one with God. Uh, we are really uh, reconciled with Him. Now, this reconciliation we obtain, of course, in confession. Whenever we speak about reconciliation, what comes in the mind, especially in the mind of a Catholic, is confession. But we must know that a ritual confession alone will not bring a reconciliation. There is a condition for confession. Uh, forgive one another. Very clearly, Jesus said in Matthew uh, chapter 6, 14 and 15, if you do not forgive the sins of others, trespasses of others, your trespasses will not be forgiven. And if you forgive the trespasses of others, your trespasses will be forgiven. This is what we pray in the Holy, our, our Father, the prayer Jesus taught us. Forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven the trespasses of others. So, in this Easter season, let's go deep into our heart. I know many of you make confessions. Now according to the new law given by Rome, perhaps you made confession directly to Jesus. Perhaps some of you obtained absolution uh, through the telephone from priest. Otherwise you received actually a forgiveness of sin. But you have to look into your heart. Are you reconciled with your parents, with your spouse, with your children, colleagues, neighbors? We are still having can some distance, a wall of distance with your neighbor. You are not reconciled with God. Although you received an absolution, I don't believe you are reconciled with God. So, my dear children, my brothers and sisters, uh, in this uh, time, when we are celebrating Easter in the heart, ask yourself any unforgiveness towards anyone. I call the man or woman with whom we are some distance. Break the wall. Ask pardon with humility. Uh -huh. I have offended you. Please forgive me. And if somebody offended you and you are keeping some kind of grudge, anger, unforgiveness, simply before God forgive him and pray for him. Break the wall. Uh -huh. Break the wall of enmity. When you broke the wall of enmity with the people, the wall of enmity with God will be automatically broken. Then you fall in love with Jesus. Then you can say you are celebrating Easter. And the second point, you are redeemed. Yeah, we all read, by the blood of Christ, we are redeemed. What's the meaning of that word, A redemption? Uh, we must know that in olden times, Slaves were redeemed by paying a ransom. And it is in that sense here redemption is used. We know how we were redeemed. We read in 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Verse 18 onwards.
you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. Hallelujah! Jesus paid a ransom, paid a debt by shedding his blood for you and for me. So we are redeemed from the slavery of Satan and sin. Jesus said, he who commits sin is a slave of sin. Very clearly he said in Matthew, in John chapter 8, 34, the Son has to redeem you. Then only you will be really redeemed. This redemption cannot be obtained by oneself. Don't think by our rituals or prayers, saying of rosaries or novena, we can be redeemed. Many Catholics perhaps may have that concept in the mind. We read in Psalm 49, Psalm 49, verse 8 and 9, one cannot redeem oneself. Pay to God a ransom. Too high the price to redeem a life. One would never have enough. Hallelujah. Yes, we cannot redeem ourselves by our good deeds. No. We cannot. Also, we cannot redeem somebody else. The price is too high. The word of God says the price is too high. Uh, we are never enough. That price is paid by Jesus on the cross. So, when we die to sin, when we decide for a new life in Christ Jesus, we are ascended to Christ and we are able to have that freedom from slavery. We will feel that inner freedom and that's why we will be able to love God more, praise God more, etc. We read in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12 onwards. In olden times, people thought that they would be redeemed by the blood of a lamb or a cow or an animal. But now, uh, the precious blood of Jesus can show in the conscience so that you can love God, serve God, worship God. Hallelujah! So, we must know the price God paid, Jesus paid. That is even the last to top of the blood. That's why uh, St. Paul says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, you are bought with a price. A God paid for us. We must know that. Uh, we should never forget uh, that we are useless people. No. We are precious in the sight of Jesus. Because he paid his blood for you and for me to liberate us from the slavery of sin. He paid and liberated from the bondage. Now we have to ask ourselves, are we really redeemed? Are we still under the slavery of any bad habits? Maybe bad habits of uh, uh, alcoholism, drugs, smoking, or maybe bad habits of uh, some kind of immoral bad habits, like a masturbation, adultery, homosexuality, or a pornography, etc. If you are under this bondage, I don't think we have a meaningful Easter. Our celebration will not be meaningful. That's why we go deep. Or are we under the bondage of Satan? Some or other are we involved in Satanism, Freemasonry, or any type of esoteric way like uh, yoga, Reiki, and what you call slavery to the powers of the nature? Or are we a slave of this planet Earth? Are we worshipping planet and the powers of the planet? Are we so stupid? As St. Paul calls the, uh, tells the Ephesians or Colossians, are you stupid Galatians? No, we should not be stupid. We should be wise. We should not serve the creatures, but serve God alone. So, let's make sure in this Easter season that we are liberated from the slavery of sin. That maybe people with bad habits make a strong decision to get out of it. By God's grace, from the risen body of Christ, surely you will get out of it and begin a life in freedom of the Spirit. And I'm sure uh, you will reap it in your heart. And justification, the third point, yeah, we are justified. 
what is the meaning of that? It's a court to them, justified. That means uh, publicly declaring that a sinner is no more a sinner. We read in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Uh, Those who are in Christ Jesus is not in condemnation. Hallelujah. That means those who are in Christ Jesus are redeemed, uh, not only really redeemed, justified. Uh, you know the story of Maximilian Kolbe, uh, who actually took uh, uh, the place of another prisoner in order to save him, because he had a family. And Maximilian Kolbe was a priest. Like that, Jesus took the penalty of sin, uh, the punishment of sin on himself. So you and I are justified before God. Uh, I remember when I was uh, arrested in Saudi Arabia for carrying thousand groceries which was which were given from Medjugorje, I was produced in the court. A good American captain by name James Vicky pleaded my case. He told the judge, look at this James, he's not guilty. He did not know the law of Saudi Arabia. And the people of Medjugorje gave the rosaries for the army. He carried it. Please release him. That means he was taking the responsibility of my guilt, my sin. And then the, the judge said, James is liberated. Hallelujah. Like that, we all are in condemnation by our sin. Yes, he who sin is, is in condemnation. Sometimes there is a false teaching nowadays. There is no condemnation, no hell. It is a false teaching. Very clearly, after saying about God's love, St. John says in John chapter 3, 18 and 19, uh, he came, of course, to save everyone. But those who do not believe are in condemnation. If only we believe in Christ Jesus and accept Him as Lord of our life and confess our sins to God and get forgiven us and reconcile and liberation uh, from the bondage of Satan, then only we are justified. Now then the Lord will look at us and say, this man is justified. Now no more punishment on him. That pronouncement we can hear. We read in uh, uh, Colossians, letter of St. Paul to Colossians, chapter One verse 13, one thirteen. God delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son. Hallelujah! It's a great thing that has happened. Yeah, on the cross and by His resurrection. Yeah, we are transferred from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God. What is kingdom of God? Life in the Holy Spirit. Romans 14, 17. Uh, kingdom of God is love, peace, joy, and holiness uh, by the Holy Spirit. So we have to ask ourselves, uh, are we really in His kingdom? We say in the Our Father, Thy kingdom come. But do we really experience that kingdom in our soul, in our heart? And we read in Colossians chapter 2, 13 onwards. Even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, He brought you to life along with Him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with His legal claims, which was opposed to us. You also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. That means there were a lot of curses on us. There were a lot of what you call uh, condemnation on us. But Jesus took everything and nailed them on the cross. And no one can again, what you call, say that we are in condemnation. For that we have to look into our soul. Uh, we have to look into our soul. Uh, Jesus said very clearly, uh, I will not remember your sin anymore. Read Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. Jesus not only really forgives, Reconcile, but forget the past. Forget the past. Are we still keeping the guilt of sin? Are we having the fear of curses of sin? Then surely uh, we are not justified. 
stand with a heart open before the Lord, experience it within the heart that liberation and that what you call redemption. And hear the voice of the Lord who says, I will not condemn you anymore. In other words, you are no more hell. For that the heart must be clean, liberated, reconciled. Similarly, we cannot say with our lips, yes, I am justified. No. So this should happen in the heart through the Holy Spirit. We know in baptism we are united uh, with his death, burial and resurrection. Romans chapter uh, 6, 3 onwards. And we must be able to say, say I died to sin once and for all. As Jesus died once and for all on the cross. No more, uh, what do you call, death on him. We also should be able to say, no more death. That means, bite to sin and the occasions of sin. Then only uh, we are justified before the Lord. At every moment we must be able to stand before the Lord justified without feeling of guilt or condemnation or any burden, feeling burden. No. We are united with the Christ Jesus and we are acquitted of our guilt. Uh, once we are forgiven, nobody else can have accused sin on us. Satan cannot say, oh, you are in sin. You are the guilt of sin. No, Satan has no claim then. Uh, that's why we are justified before God means nobody can condemn us. No human being or any evil spirit can condemn and claim for our souls. No, cannot. Because we are justified before God. Let's come to that state of justification during this time. Number four, righteousness. Righteousness in simple word means right with God, right with another. Right with one another. That means we are sanctified. Another word for righteousness is sanctification. Yeah, we are sanctified by the blood of Christ. We are having a share of the divine nature. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4 says, We have a divine nature in us. We must realize we are not just what you call uh, to live a life of some prayers or novenas or uh, some rituals. No, much more. Uh, we are called to holiness of life. Righteousness of life. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 15 and 16. In every context you have to be holy like God is holy. That is our basic vocation, to be holy. And that's God's will for us. Always in all my retreats I say and make the people to repeat uh, what is God's will for you? My holiness. Yes, it is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. This is God's will for you, your holiness. Not everyone who calls God, Lord, Lord, who entered the kingdom of God, but one who does God's will. That will is holiness of life. And Jesus on the cross and by his resurrection won this holiness for you and for me. In him we are holy. Let's look into our hearts. Are we able to stand before the Lord and say, I am a holy person? I am really washed of my sins and all oh, my heart is white as snow. We know in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, the Lord was calling, Come, acknowledge your sin. I am ready to forgive sin. However dirty is your heart, I am ready to wash. And I will make your heart white as snow. Let's ask ourselves, uh, put in a hand on the chest. Am I really white before the Lord? Am I really uh, putting on a white garment of holiness on my soul? That means I am again experiencing paradise in my soul. Yes, then only we can say that we are experiencing really the joy of Easter, the blessings of Easter, the fruits of the Easter. We should never forget uh, our definition, definition of a Christian. You are the chosen race, a royal priest, a holy person. You are God's own to proclaim the good things God has done in our life. That means 
to be witnesses. Let's think of that always. We are called from this world. We are separated by the blood of Christ. We are the holy people. The world is divided into two. Or oh, when Jesus' heart was broken, when the veil in the temple was broken, people who are holy and people who are unholy. And people who are redeemed, people who are not redeemed. We know there's a word in the book of Revelation towards the end of the Bible. St. John writes in the book of Revelation uh, a word that is very, very serious. Sometimes I read and meditate, cry over that word. Verse uh, 11. Let the wicked, uh, Revelation chapter 22, 11. Let the wicked, wicked people still act wickedly, and the filthy still be filthy. The righteous and holy do right, holy shall be more holy. Hallelujah. The Lord is looking at the world and telling today, let the wicked people continue in their wickedness. It may go on. And if you desire it for a holy life, continue to be holier, holier, holier. Hallelujah. So this division will go up to the end of time. I know nowadays because of the corona and disease and many deaths, many people are even thinking of the end of the age. No, 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 no. But still, we can see the world is going towards the second coming of Jesus. When? We don't know. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe after thousands of years. After thousands of years. But we should be prepared. We should make sure we are on the right side of Jesus, growing more and more in holiness. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit in us, as we read in uh, Second Corinthians chapter 3, 16 to 18. Uh, anyone who turns to the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes to him, and the Holy Spirit takes him from glory to glory, holiness to holiness. Hallelujah. So, my dear brothers and sisters in God Jesus, remember this uh, four points which I told reconciliation, redemption, justification and righteousness or holiness. Let's obtain this during these days in the silent days and thus celebrate the Easter in the heart with a great joy and let's be united in spirit with all the Christians all over the world with all those who are redeemed, with all those who are justified all those who are reconciled. Once again, I wish you all a very happy Easter. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord is showering many blessings on you, on your families, and on your countries and the whole world. I pray for us. Lord Jesus, I thank you and praise you for having uh, these people who are listening to my message. Bless them, sanctify them, enable them to experience the reconciliation, redemption, justification, and also holiness in their life, so that this year the Easter Christmas must be a special Easter, Christmas where they become new persons in you. Old is gone, new is come. Lord, bless them, heal them. I pray that you protect all these people from any disease, any illness, especially from coronavirus, so that during this season they may uh, remain closer to you and obtain all the blessings you brought to this world by your death and resurrection and remain as authentic Catholic Christians. Bless them in abundance. Mary Mama, through your immaculate heart, uh, I surrender all those who are listening to this message, the heart of your Son Jesus Christ. My dear people, I bless you, I sanctify you with uh, all the priests in heaven and on earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Happy Easter. God bless you all.